my apologies this um, video I tried recording earlier but it stopped working in the middle of the recording for some reason so I'm gonna go ahead and go through everything so that all this stuff on the paper makes sense and you kind of know what order I did it in so the first thing I did here was is I had to get the square root by itself and positive and it is by itself and positive so we went ahead and got rid of the square root by squaring both sides. When we do that, the house goes away, so you have 7x plus 25. On the right hand side, a squaring a binomial means to write the binomial twice and then multiply it out. So here we got 9x squared and negative 45x, negative 45x, and a positive 225. Now this is going to end up being a quadratic equation, so I minus these two terms over there to make it equal to zero. So then I had 9x squared, which is this, 0 on the left hand side, negative 45, negative 45, and negative 7 was negative 97, positive 225 minus 25 was positive 200. And instead of trying to factor that, because when you multiply you'll get 1800, that's super large, instead we decided to do the quadratic formula. So my a was equal to 9. Um, my a is equal to 9, my b is equal to 97, and my c is equal to 200. So we did negative of b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And then that became positive 97. All of this in the calculator turned out to be 209, and the denominator is 18. Then we took the square root of 2209, which happened to be 47. So we had 97 plus 47 over 18 and 97 minus 47 over 18. When we computed this fraction out, we got 8. When we computed this fraction out in the calculator, we got 25 over 9. But we have to check both answers in this problem. So first we plugged in 8 on both sides for x. Then we computed inside the radical and we got 81. We computed what we had on the right hand side and we got 9. And the square root of 81 does equal 9, so 8 was a solution, which is why 8 is written there inside the solution set. Then we tried to plug in 25 over 9 for x on the left and x on the right. We put this in the calculator and we got the square root of 400 over 9. We put this in the calculator, we got negative 20 over 3. The square root of 400 over 9 is the same as the square root of 400, which is 20, over the square root of 9, which is 3. But although these are the same number, they are opposite in signs, which does not make them equivalent. So 25 over 9 did not check out, which is why my final answer would not include 25 over 9, just the 8. Now the next example we had here, we noticed that the square root was positive, but it wasn't alone. So we had to get rid of this minus 2 to get that square root alone. So we added 2 to both sides giving us 2x minus 14 on the right hand side. Then we applied the square on both sides to get rid of the house. So there that gets rid of the house. I now just have 5x minus 14 on the left. On the right hand side, a binomial squared means write the binomial twice and then multiply it out. So when we multiplied it out, we got 4x squared, negative 28x, negative 28x, and positive 196. Again, this is a squared function here or a squared equation. So we had to get everything equal to zero. So I minus 5x and added 14 on both sides. Then that means on this side, I'll end up with zero. And on this side, I end up with 4x squared and negative 28, negative 28, negative five gave me negative 61x. And then 196 plus 14 gave me 210. Again, instead of trying to factor this, four times 210 is a really large number, like 840. I don't want to sit there with all the factors of that trying to factor it. So we just jumped into the quadratic formula. Here a is equal to 4, b is equal to negative 61, and c is equal to 210. So we did negative b value plus or minus b value squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Then, <coughs> excuse me, I apologize. Um, then here the negative of the negative gives you positive 61 and inside the square root I typed all of that in a calculator and I got 361. The square root of 
61 happens to be 19. So we actually have 61 plus 19 over 8 and 61 minus 19 over 8. When we typed this in the front in the calculator, we got 10. And when we typed this in the calculator, we got 21 over 4. Now what we don't know is if either of those, one or both, are the answer. So we have to plug them back into the original equation. So we're going to take the square root of 5 times 10 minus 14 minus 2 equal to 2 times 10 minus 16. Let's see what we get over here. So I'm going to do the square root of 5 times 10 minus 14. And then I'm going to get outside of the house and put minus 2. And I get 4. Now on the other side of the equation, we're going to type that in and I get 4. So 10 checks out and 10 will be part of my solution set. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to be plugging in 21 over 4. So let's see what we get. Square root, oops, clear. Square root. 5 times 21 over 4 minus 14 minus 2 and I get 3 over 2. On the right hand side I have 2 times 21 over 4 minus four, um, 16 and I get negative 11 over 2 and those are not equivalent so 21 over 4 is not a solution. So I only have one solution here which is 10. Now it may not necessarily always be the whole number that's the solution. Sometimes it may be the fraction is the solution. You have to check it in the equation to verify which one of those is actually the solution. Do not assume that it's always the whole number. Now here, they want me to solve this. Um, I do need to factor it, but notice that it's got squareds and fourth powers. So we're gonna have to use that substitution method. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say let u equal the middle variable part, x squared. Then that means that if I squared both sides, that means u squared would equal x to the fourth. So if I substitute that, it becomes 25u squared. Instead of x to the fourth, we're gonna use u squared. And instead of x squared, we're gonna use u. And then now you factor it or use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula seems to be faster. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. So then we get u equal to 20 plus or minus, and let's see what we get that square root. Negative 20 squared minus 4 times 25 times 3, we get 100 over 50. And the square root of 100 is just 10. So we actually get 20 plus 10 over 50, 20 minus 10 over 50. And so that's 30 over 50, which is 3 fifths. And then 10 over 50, which is 1 fifth. So we get two fractions here, and we have to remember that u equals these. The problem was not given to us in terms of u. So we cannot write 3 fifths and 1 fifths in these blanks. Okay? We have to remember that u was represented as x squared. And if I want to solve for x, I have to actually take the square root of both sides. And now when I do that, I end up with plus or minus. Now remember, we can't do the square root of a fraction inside the calculator, but what we can do is do the square root of each individual part, and the calculator will simplify it for me. So it gets the square root of 15 over 5. Then for the other answer, we get x, e x squared equals 1 fifth. Take the square root of both sides. We get x equals plus or minus 
And again, we have to do it in parts. So square root of 1 over square root of 5. And it tells me it's square root of 5 over 5. Those are my answers. I have four of them. I have square root of 15 over 5, negative square root of 15 over 5, square root of 5 over 5, and then negative square root of 5 over 5. Now this problem did not have a fraction and did not have a square root, so I did not have to check all four of these answers. Now 20 is just another example of the same thing. So you're not going to get two problems like this on the test. More than likely, you'll just get one if you get one of these at all, right? So let's go ahead and do the u substitution. So u will be the x squared, and then u to the fourth will be the u squared. So we get u squared minus 5u minus 14 equal to 0. This one would be probably faster to factor. And so then these guys, the bigger number would have to be negative. Um, so we get u squared positive 2u minus 7u minus 14. These have a u in common. These have a 7 in common. So you have u plus 2u minus 7. And then if you set each equal to 0, That would equal negative 2. This one would equal positive 7. And then go back and plug in what you represented. So to solve for x, you still have to take the square root of both sides. So you get plus or minus. And then you get the square root of negative 2. Here you take the square root. You get x equals plus or minus the square root of 7. Here, this will have to turn into an i. And here, there is no way to reduce square root of 7. So you've got four answers here. You've got i square root of 2, negative i square root of 2, you've got square root of 7, and then negative square root of 7. Okay, now this is the last example on this page. And it's a little bit different here. So it says, decide whether the relation defined the, by the graph to the right defines a function and give the domain and range. These are the type of problems that you don't need to show any work um, because it's more of just looking at the graph and then being able to identify information. And so a problem like this on the test will say um, you do not need to show your work or something along those lines, but a phrase like that. So it says, is the graph the relation of function? If I draw even just one vertical line right there, it crosses it twice. So the answer is no. Um, what is the domain graph relation? So how far left if I transpose everything, all of these points onto the x-axis, it starts at negative 1 and it goes all the way to the right forever. And then it solid graph here, so I am going to put a bracket on that domain. The range, if I were to transpose this onto the y-axis, would have an arrow here, all of these, and then all of those would transpose there, all of these would transpose here, and there'd be another arrow. So how far down? To negative infinity. How far up? To positive infinity. And that's all we needed to do for that particular problem. So there's not really any work. I mean, if you wanted to draw that on your paper and transpose it, you could, um, but that's not necessary if you're seeing it with your eyes. Okay, I want to do another one like this, um, and then I'll do a separate video for the next few problems. So it says, decide whether the relation define, um, defines a function. So is it a function, uh, function or not? Well, here it doesn't matter how many vertical lines I draw, none of them cross it more than once. So for this case, it would be yes. What is the domain? It's going to the left forever and to the right forever. So it's negative infinity to infinity. It's going down forever and it's going up forever. So the range is also negative infinity to infinity. And I'm going to stop here and I'll do the rest of the problems in the next video.